Welcome back to the Mary Jane Report, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com, and we are joined, as always, for our monthly Mary Jane Report by Mr. Chris of the Mary Jane Report. Thanks for joining us again, buddy. My pleasure, James. Hey, so this is actually the first time we're doing this, and it's not live. We started mm. the Mary Jane Report with us together in in January, and it's a monthly thing. We do this on the we had been doing this on the third Wednesday of every month. We're actually taping this a few days early, and I think to have hopefully a longer conversation, because I'd basically, in the previous months, put you on the phone at 9.30 a.m., and we'd talk really fast for 15 minutes, and then at 9.45, I was like, buddy, you got to go, because i got to wrap this show up. We so blinked, and it was over. It went really quickly, and people actually really, I mean, they enjoyed hearing from you, and we all pretty much felt like, ah, God, that, that goes really quickly. You'd only have 15 yeah. minutes a month. So we want to take this time and actually talk for about 30 minutes. And we'll, of course, include a bit of this on the regular slot on the show, which I realize, Chris, will be on April 19th. And we'll Ooh. talk about the big April 420 holiday right. in just a couple of minutes on this April 2017 edition of your Mary Jane Report. Again, I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. We are joined by our co-host, Mr. Chris, from the Mary Jane Report, and we'll have all his links and deets and some interesting information about Mary Jane Report at the end of this show. But I want to start out talking about my home state, and I talked about this a little bit on my recent Good News Next Week episode, and there are two bits of good news from my home state of West Virginia. House unanimously approves commercial hemp farming, and they've been slowly but surely eking into doing some industrial hemp farming in West Virginia. Yeah. And I think even with this passage, it's still, I believe, going to kind of stay, you know, it's a heavily licensed thing, and there's only going to be X amount of licenses doled out each year. The other bit of good news, and we can take both of these together or separate, is that West Virginia is going to be the 29th state to move forward with medical marijuana. Now, I tried to look for updates on this. This story actually broke and, and became official really at the end of March and at the beginning of April. But as I look around, I think all, all our Congress critters, I think, are pretty much on, they're all on spring break. So there are lots of things sort of... Aren't they always on spring break, it seems? You know, there's lots of golf to be done. <laughs> Yeah. But I think there's lots, you know, I was talking on the show about, you know, Sonny Perdue is going to be the new, the head of agriculture guy, who's mm -hmm. all but confirmed. And I think much like that, this situation in West Virginia, it's all but awaiting a signature. But I think, again, because all the critters are on vacation, things are not quite done. So, oh, hemp, yeah, right. Hemp for West Virginia is coming up. We better go on vacation. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and actually, I mean, people are, people are surprised they went for medical. The, I mean, yeah. they shouldn't be surprised given the opioid crisis that has been openly talked about for quite some time in West Virginia. But I think people are surprised that actual Republicans ended up pushing through medical marijuana in West Virginia. Yeah, it's um, so the 29th state, you know, I wanted to ask you is what's the number? What is there some type of, of legal um, stature with when you get past the halfway point in the state's numbers to where something is legal states-wise, where it would be legal federally. Do you know about this? No, not at all. Are you basically saying where once it, I mean, because we're well past the Oh, yeah. The half, the you just said mark. this. I'm like, I just realized 20, I thought we were stuck at like 24, 25, 26. Obviously, I, I know that, but now I'm just thinking about it now. And I'm like, the 29th state, you just, I, 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 I posted this on my blog as well uh, last week or something or two weeks ago. And yeah, I mean, I just, the 29th state, I mean, you know, <laughs> this is. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I, you're basically saying if so many states would vote for something. I thought that was something I heard that, yeah, if it, hmm. would be, it, it would make it automatically official or legal throughout everything because it's it passed that you know you're you're huh. you're at the 50 you know the majority rule yeah. kind of thing that i mean <laughs> we can look into that, that sounds like something that would make way too much sense of course there's probably that's why it's probably not true <laughs> <laughs> unless it's once again selective for what the, you know they want you know then it would probably uh it would go that way but <laughs> now to be sure the new governor of west virginia jim justice which is a fantastic name i gotta i gotta <laughs> really? at least gotta say that He's a, it's, you know, as lots of other people voted this past fall, he's a super duper kind of celebrity millionaire back in West Virginia and back and around that place. He owns the Greenbrier Resort and I think has also dabbled in, you know, sports ownership and all that kind of stuff. I don't have a ton of faith that, <laughs> that mm. hemp and, and cannabis in West Virginia is not going to be untouched by the cronies mm. that yeah. run our capitals. However, yeah. having said all of that, 
I've told the stories often on the show since I saw it, since I was back there in West Virginia and saw people protesting in the Capitol in Charleston, West Virginia. And I've told the story about the, you know, seeing the the, the vet with camo bottoms and a white T-shirt and a sign that says, don't thank me, help me and legalize marijuana. The crisis that's been going on there for a long time, and of course there's all the connections to the pharmaceutical companies, to the Mm. banks, that all knowingly puffed all of this up, because hey, it's money, it's fast profits, and who gives a crap about any of the poor people in West Virginia anyway? That's been the crisis that's kind of been pumped up there. So if any of that can have the brakes put on it, you know, I I look at that as a a green lining to the cloud, if you will. Oh, absolutely. Um, how bad is it there? I mean, I'm looking at the, I'm scrolling down the article we're looking at here in um, the opioid crisis. How bad is it in, is it looks like it's, is it the worst in the it's, country? It's, it's number one. Oh. It was number one, leading the nation in, in opioid deaths and overdoses. Wow. So it was interesting the last time I was, I was visiting back in West Virginia. Of course, you know, us poor people, we have to plan our trips, you know, far in advance because the (laughs) flights are all so expensive. We're there and we're in West Virginia. We're on the trip. And then we hear President Obama is going to go to Charleston to speak about the opioid crisis in West Virginia. (gasps) He was literally flying into Charleston as we were waiting for our flight to go out. And I was just like, if you delay, Mm. my, you know, it's already difficult enough flying and making all your connections and all that stuff. Then at the last minute, the president swoops in. But yeah, and and I'm thinking right away, I'm like, how many executive orders did this guy have to go through and not address this ahead of time and legalize cannabis to help people get off of this, you know, opioid Mm -hmm. painkiller uh, you know, epidemic. And uh, right away, I'm like, nobody's going to go there and speak about it. And he's a great speaker. That was great, you know, but. I know, I was speaking with somebody, I forget, in the in the window of, you know, Trump had been elected, but, you know, Obama was still president, that there was this sort of window. It's like, you know what? Obama could still, you know, he could write an executive. There's, you know, there's yeah. almost this, this window of who could be, I mean, the, the goodwill and sort of the coolness factor of either of them having done that in that window, I think would have just sort of oh. resounded for generations. But So we're doing the Mary Jane Report here. We got <clears throat> Mr. Chris from Mary Jane dot report, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. So we're talking about the good news, West Virginia becoming the 29th state to legalize medical marijuana. I did and, not know that was your hometown, by the way. Sorry. To oh, no. Idea. My, yeah, I'm, I'm originally yeah. from West Virginia. I remember Virginia. you mentioned it, yeah. And from uh, from the southern part of the state. I am originally from a town called Fayetteville, which is only an hour away from the capital, Charleston. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost 420, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be 420, dude. And there is a a press release that basically expects we're talking about the 420 holiday that is April 20th to exceed 45 million dollars compared to last year you know in a day in one they're talking about in one day MJ yeah. Freeway the cannabis industry's leading provider of seed to sale traceability solutions predicts a 20% increase in retail cannabis sales and a 10% increase in customer traffic during the biggest cannabis holiday of the year MJ Freeway's predictions are based on sales data figures compiled through analysis of their majority cannabis retail market share. With the largest, and most, it's so funny to be reading a press release about all of this. It's just sort of the same sort of business legally speak, but they're talking about a different widget. With the largest and most representative retail data in the cannabis industry, we can more accurately predict trends for the 420 holiday. That's a lot of money in one day. And now it's just sort of, you know, we talk about things for a long, 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 long time. And then they can change pretty quickly. How quickly has this change really kind of gone and it's and it's openly happening? You and I talked a couple of months ago during the inauguration about, you know, people lighting up 4,200 joints. That's right. Um. So actually, let me ask you what the situation, yeah. what's, what is it in, what is it there? And are, are you in, you're in Jersey? I'm in, I'm in Jersey and it's funny because a second ago I had said something and I'm trying to watch my Jersey accent. I'm not, that's not it, but uh, it's more like that Danny DeVito thing. Cause he's from New Jersey. <laughs> I listen to myself. So I just said something. I'm like, Oh, and he let that Jersey accent slip out again. I'm trying to keep that, you know, that non accent <laughs> thing happening. Here. Hey, I'm, I'm from West um, Virginia. So it comes out. Well, so do you guys have medical? Yes, we do. Okay. And, I'm, and you know what? As soon as you bring this, so, you know, obviously, I, I, I think you're going from, well, I had, I had posted this on my, uh, in my Mary Jane Report uh, Twitter page and my blog and my web page and everything. But uh, 
I'm thinking of the edibles because the edibles are starting. And so you have the biggest growing business in the world, which is cannabis and hemp. And then inside of it, you have the edibles, which is, is the biggest growing business. And I wonder how much of that, if they break it down, because that's really starting to, you know, literally grow like a weed. And, um, yeah, 45. So to answer your question about New Jersey, um, you can't, there's no edibles. And I don't think you can have any plant. It's it's literally like it's these little baby steps. They just keep you know. It's mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. it's just sad. It's sad. But but I'm not complaining because there's there's like six whole dis- dispensaries in the state. But um, you can buy the buds. But uh, as far as anything else, uh, edibles or anything. And I know a friend that had just made some edibles recently. I'm um, I haven't partaken in them at all. But and I have another friend that had tried them, and they're saying if you get the right, you know right amount, the right dose, the right, you know, little piece of it, you try it because it's a lot. Am I going off on a tangent here? No, 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 because I even it, it made me go back and look at actually because you mentioned edibles and actually in the in the first story about West Virginia. So if I can if I can throw this in West Virginia's yeah. medical marijuana measure is more limited than many other states laws. It will allow vaporization along with pills, oils, gels, creams, ointments, tinctures and other liquids. But it does not allow smoking pot and it does not allow dispersion dispensaries to sell edibles mm. you know the edibles are, are probably like they're so afraid of lsd because it you know it, it might even you know it'll be a, a sustained level of maybe things opening up in your in your mind <laughs> they don't want that or or you know <laughs> honestly there is an issue where people you can because it's i was just going to say when you smoke I don't know the exact scientific, uh, you know, measure or duration, but it hits in a certain point and it's gone within an hour, hour and a half and you start coming down. I mean, you feel, you still feel a little bit, but with the edible James, I think it's like a peak up to two and a half hours and back down two and a half hours. So you have the peak and there's a five hour total here. Look at me with the math, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So yeah, so it's, it's, it's a little bit more of a, you have to know what you're doing with the edible. So yeah, they are a little bit more not say risky, but uh, I'm just curious of what of this money that they're saying is going to is going to be in edibles. And uh, as the edibles, mm. you know, continue to, to uh, you know, become more a part of the staple of everything. And they were probably the last thing actually to be rolled out here yeah. in Oregon, where we do have medical and recreational. It was a while before. And even, of course, because all the rec shops are also medicinal shops as well. You could go in and look at the case and go, ooh, what about those? And they'd say, ooh, those are only for medical card. Yeah. And so for the longest time, it was just that. And I still think that even the way that a lot of the laws and have been written here in Oregon were written pretty well and and still for the majority for the benefit of medical patients. And I think the, you know, the allowances of what they're allowed to buy milligram wise and the prices and the taxes and all that stuff are very much in, in their favor, as opposed to the recreational. Whereas if you just want to walk up off the street, you get hit with a pretty large amount of taxes for, of course, lower amounts of THC and CBD and your stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. and I can't wait till they till there's to the point where you can uh, you can juice the leaves like kale because people are when I first started um, doing this six months ago it was one of that stories just blown my totally blew my mind um, there was a, a woman many people or, or not many but that have just they just take the leaves and they juice them like kale like a vegetable and that's what this is this is a plant and I can't wait because I would you know I don't mind mm-hmm. like we talked about smoking every once in a while but. I'd rather just get the, they're saying that 98% more of the medicinal properties of the plant, if you just juice and just take a little shot of it literally every day, but, but you need to, that's the problem. Where do you get the leaves from? You need, I guess you need mm-hmm. a bunch of, uh, quite a bit of, in weight of the leaves to put through a juicer to get that amount, you know, but I can't wait to wrap the, you know, there's someone I would to, 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 they start selling you the leaves or you can, you know, grow it in your own house. Absolutely. Ju- Absolutely. You ridiculous. even, I mean, you remind me, I had a conversation with my mom not too long ago and I forget exactly what the what the story was it was something it was something about marijuana in west virginia and and i don't know if it was about you know synthetics or or something but it was amazing to be having a conversation with my mom where she's even going oh well i guess the only way you could really ensure that it was good is if you just grow it yourself like exactly there it is and your mom's is. a genius that's that to me is the most important factor in everything in this whole entire you know cannabis hemp mary jane momentum green rush is that that people we should all be focusing on 
the freedom and the, you know, the liberty, as Ron Paul would say, in being able to grow a plant in your home and do what you want with it. And, of course, go out and buy it at a, at a, at a, at a store like what liquor stores are, turn, you know, are now when it's, you know, recreation. You tell me in Oregon, it's like instead of a liquor store, you have a, you know, a, a cannabis store. You just buy it or a dispensary or something. I mean, that's great, too, and, and to have that option. But to have it, you know, in your home and do what you want with it, that's where, you know, that's that's the freedom revolution that's kind of, to me, you know, and I'm sure as, as well with you, you know. That's it. It's very and, important. And, yeah. and the Oregon law was written. I think you can grow, you can be growing four plants at your place. Nice. And, and then I think if you are then a, a provider, then I think that, that amount goes up even more. So we're mm-hmm. doing our Mary Jane Report for April 2017. Again, I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. We're talking to Mr. Chris from MaryJane.Report. And we head off to the Great White North as Canada announces legalization to legalize marijuana. The Canadian government last Thursday? Yeah, Sorry. that was just last Thursday. What's that? I, I clicked on the page as what you're talking about, and then the, the ad just started playing. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even hear it. Uh, of okay, course, yeah, good. the ads and the auto plays. That's that's the bane of my of my live <laughs> show sometimes in the, in the morning show. As I was saying, yes, the Canadian sorry. government on last Thursday, or is it, no, that's today, today. April thirteenth. That's now yeah. announced new legalization, new legislation legalizing marijuana, fulfilling one of. SJW boy toy Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's <laughs> major campaign promises. I haven't looked at any of the specifics on this. Do you yeah, know? Do you know much it's about it? It's still developing today, I think. Yeah. I mean, I, <clears throat> as much as these stories are positive, I just there's you know I have said it a lot. I, I, it frustrates me that the same people who got to lord over the yeah. prohibition are the same who gets a, the benefit from it. Yeah, all that's the, from well, the exploitation. Well, once again, what we just mentioned about keeping the power in our own homes there along with everything else, you know, instead of buying a pharmaceutical synthesized version of Mary Jane, you can, you know, you should be able to go to, you know, free market with it. You know, that's, that's that absolutely, yep. Canada has anticipated the law will take effect in the summer of 2018. U.S. voters in California, Massachusetts, Maine, and Nevada decided last year to approve the use of recreational marijuana, joining Colorado, Washington, Oregon, and Alaska. Uruguay is the only nation to legalize recreational pot. And I've got a story right here from the BBC that, again, all these stories actually are coming from your site, and you've got an amazing output of news related to cannabis and hemp and even as i started to look i was like whoa i don't know these stories i don't know that story so i'll, I'll <laughs> well, thanks course, yeah I, I do so i do go through and spend an hour a day and find them what i think is the most important stories yeah and i think that's and that's an important service because yeah. oh, there is you, you know because there is so much there is so much out there now i do find you know being kind of specialized as you are it is 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 an invaluable service so yeah, each yeah. and essentially every day you're posting up new articles of just, you know, links and the new headlines and the new stories. Uruguay to sell cannabis in pharmacies. They'll begin selling cannabis in pharmacies from, from July, as they say, I believe, starting in July. The final stage in the country's pioneering regularization of the drug. The South American country will be the first in the world to legally sell the drug over the counter for recreational use. Damn. Yeah. Piece by piece. I saw something, I think, from Forbes as I was looking to see if there were any updates on the West Virginia medical marijuana story. And there was an article from Forbes that says, essentially, states are going to find themselves quickly addicted to the massive revenue from hemp and cannabis. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's the one that I put. It. What's it called? The, the governors are addicted to a billion dollars in tax revenue. From oh, cannabis. OK. So you already had that. You, you had that headline? Yeah, I put that up, I think, uh, sometime this week or last week. Yeah, I think we have it somewhere. Uh, you go on my Twitter page, you'll find it. I'm, I'm, I don't want to open another page and have another <laughs> ad pop up. <laughs> well, just, uh, just you know, kind of kind of talk about that. That, you know, again, yeah. it's it's once the idea is sort of out there and not only the idea, it's again, it's it's once once the green starts rolling in. Oh, yeah. I, I think they're just adding up all the taxes from all the, the recreational states and medicinal. I'm not sure if that, that number comes from that, but it's it's well over a billion dollars. That I think they're, I don't know what it was last year, but um, I think they're saying for 2017, that's what the total may be in tax revenue. Yeah. And of course, you know, the governors are hopefully they'll be more addicted to that than they are to their, you know, corporations and central bank federal reserve connection. And this will sway everything in the direction that we're, you know, talking about, you know. 
Well, I do find it interesting, you know, that that <clears throat> we're talking not just about America and Canada, that we are talking about Uruguay and yeah. talking about Argentina. Argentina's Senate voted unanimously to legalize medical marijuana, joining the lower house and setting the country on course to become the latest to relax its laws on pot. President Mauricio Macri, if that's how you pronounce it, is all but certain <laughs> to sign the bill, which garnered an unusual level of cross-party support and was applauded by patients and their families. Yeah, it's like, I mean, pretty much the, the worm has turned, like the, the, the new leaf has turned, if that's a better analogy. It's just it, the, the change is happening so quickly. It's yes. like everybody realizing, oh, you hated this too? Yeah, I did. It was a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, and it all, it all falls apart. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, it's it's the power of the people, and it's the power of the, of the money it's bringing. And um, uh, people are, That's you know, it. I feel like it's okay to to open their mouths about it now because they support it. And it's just once again, it just feeds the you know the snowball effect of everything. And and it's also that you know mainstream media, you know, doesn't really talk about this at all either. So you see mainstream media, they have a story about you know a CIA corrupt story and who's talking about it, an ex CIA head, you know? So it's, uh, I don't have to tell you this and your listeners, but, um, you know, as far as this goes, yeah, it's, uh, it's the people and, and yeah, the money that's coming in, it's just, it's just catching on, uh, like it should, of course, you know, but once again, we want to, we want to keep the government's grubby little hands to a, to a certain degree, at, at, you know, in check with all this, if we can, if the people will, you know, focus on that as well. So I was at the grocery store the other day. Cassie and I went. You know, it was nice even to just be back with my wife, going to the grocery store, doing That's something good. normal. And, of course, I'm staring at the beer section. <laughs> the craft beer industry and scene in Oregon is is unparalleled. You're looking – I mean, even our, even our, you know, corner convenience stores have a pretty amazing selection of craft beers. You can buy local beer – Pretty much anywhere you go, and as I was looking at, you know, all the all the bottles and all the cans, and of course, I love to just geek out on the on the graphic design of all of it. <laughs> I enjoy all that stuff, much like I, you know, grew up looking at, you know, records and books and VHS tapes and all those things. I've I've enjoyed yeah. that kind of you know perusing of it. And as I was looking at it, I was just thinking, it's like once. Once essentially the government got out of the way in lots of ways and removed yeah. the restrictions on how much alcohol you're allowed to brew and how much it can have by volume and all those certain things, once those have kind of fallen away, the craft beer industry is amazing. And I was looking at it thinking, you know, probably very soon the cannabis thing is, is going to feel that way as well. Yes, just how it's incrementally moving along, it will incrementally move along that way. Um, absolutely. So I didn't really, yeah, this is right in Portland with you, this uh, microbrewery. Yeah. I'm looking at the, yeah, the article here. So <clears throat> that's, that's how we want to kind of wrap this up with the mixing of beer and cannabis. Coalition Brewing brings cannabis collaboration to a higher level with CBD Beer, a Portland-based microbrewery. Coalition Brewing has brought the potential for hops and cannabis to a whole new level. So that's interesting. A CBD beer, and again, you've talked about you're you're much more on the CBD side. Yeah, as I think yeah. a lot of people once they once they learn about it are going, oh, that's what I want. That's what I need. That's what makes me feel better, and doesn't make me feel like I'm I'm getting high or getting stoned and can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, like we we have discussed, the THC serves an amazing purpose as well. They're both equally amazing, but yeah, the THC will have a much more psychoactive effect. And uh, the one that I've tried is uh, is much higher CBD, less of a hangover. Like I, like I always say, it's not a bad hangover, which, which puts me a little bit, you know, uh, a tiny bit out of it. But that's the worst side effect, which isn't a bad thing at all. But the CBD part, it's I just love it. I am. It's probably the best I've ever, you know, had in my life. And on and off, I, like I tell you, I don't mm -hmm. do it much. But when I do, I found a certain strain with the higher CBD. Um, it's called Canatonic, by the way. But uh, so, did you try this yet? I had, no, I haven't. I, I didn't know this existed yet, <laughs> but, but, I, but I'm going to have to put it on my list. There is a natural synergy between hemp and hops, and I've been reading more and more about this, and I've seen even some of our local press and local outlets talking about, you know, here's a great pairing of weed and wine or even chocolates, and it gets into the, to the tannins and the flavors and all these things that, again, are so much fun to dive into when you're into any kind of scene or subculture. But once, you know, it's different to, you know, be into baseball cards and record collecting and all that kind of stuff, because that's not illegal. But now that this is sort of coming, you know, 
it, it's becoming socially acceptable. It's okay to then dive in and go, oh, you know, just like I said, I like looking at the stuff. I like reading the reading the words and the liner notes. It's fun to dive into all of this. So now yeah. that you know, that's the, the the prohibition is being removed. It's exciting. And you can have fun in the process of trying to find one that works for you, that you like the best, just like with the, uh, you know, the, the buds. <laughs> and think about, I mean, home brewers. I mean, hell, you know, home brewers have probably been trying to do things like this oh, for quite some yeah. time, and I never knew about it. But now you'll be able to do it, and you'll be able to do it in a more legal fashion. Something you're not able to do in a very legal fashion, you like how I did that, is monetize <laughs> nice. your YouTube channel or your blogs or things with Google AdSense and and other platforms. Why is that, Mr. Chris? Because you deal in drugs, drugs. right? Drugs. So drugs, put, are, drugs are bad. Drugs man. are bad, okay? And you put up the uh, the report. You you put up your reply, and it's posted on your site. Tell us about I, it. Yeah, I actually, I, I put up the, uh, I took a screenshot of the notification email I got from Google, and I was just saying to James off air that I, I didn't know this. I, I'm building my, my blog up for six months, and I didn't know there. I, I could have just done a little bit more research and found out they weren't going to do it, and I would have probably dove into where we're going to go with this conversation with me starting my own web page, which I wanted to do anyway. But they will not support any ad monetization for uh, YouTube or obviously Google owns Blogspot as well, which mm -hmm. is my main page. Um, uh, you know, so yeah, I'm kind of stuck until I set up my own um, page and get advertising that way. Uh, I, I, I have been discussing with uh, BitChute um, and I think uh, I, there might be something yeah, as far as direct uploads at some point and we can, cool. you know, do something there. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, <laughs> yeah. your AdSense application status. Thank you for your interest in Google AdSense. Unfortunately, after reviewing your application, we're unable to accept you. Gabba Gabba, you are not accepted. You're not one of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, they do mention alcohol and tobacco, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, there's, you know, they're not giving alcohol and tobacco to little kids with, you know, seizures, and it's stopping their seizures. You know, I mean, this is get get you or I in a room or anybody with half a fucking brain, you know, to uh, you know debate Google or I, I, like we discussed, you know, there's how many Google employees are probably smoking weed. You know, it's just absolutely, uh, and then that, and I guarantee you, I mean, I don't. Guarantee, but I'm sure that I do you know, but I haven't really even looked into pharmaceutical drug wise. I mean, are they are they doing any type of ad work for that? I'm sure they are. Google. Well, you know, the, the speculation has always been that all those places all have, you know, they've got their packaging, design, flavors, and all the things ready for when the day comes that they're finally ready to roll out their own version of of it. Yeah. Buy our buy our jazz cigarettes, whatever whatever they'll call them. <laughs> yep. Our jazz cigarettes. You like, you like that? <laughs> so yeah. as we're we're already wrapping up this April edition of your Mary Jane Report, see, even 30 minutes actually go by quickly, but that's a hell of a lot of news that to talk about. a lot more comfy, yeah. And we'll include, of course, everything that we've mentioned. It'll be included along in the show notes. And I want to mention here as we're wrapping it up, you've also got MaryJane.Report. I didn't know dot .Report was a thing. I didn't either until Google <laughs> turned me down for the advertising and I started looking. I was like, oh, it's like literally I just went full steam. I'm like, you know, stomping around. <laughs> All right. Well, I have to get my own website. Well, let's get a URL first. So I looked into it and I was like, whoa, somebody had MaryJaneReport.com. I knew that when I started this, I would have gotten mm -hmm. that in the beginning. But uh, I saw MaryJane.Report. I was like, so you just literally just type that in or www.MaryJaneReport. It goes to my blog for now, which is like my website. And yeah, you just, yeah, you yeah. just still, still redirect it. That's. I did that. Yes, for, I did that for will. years. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm saying that's that's how I did it for years. I was oh, mediamonarchy.blogspot.com okay. for oh, many, many that. years. For many years. Only in good footsteps, I am. Well, and then it'll reach the point, you know, and you'll go, yeah. "Hey, wait, I need, I need yeah. my own thing." Uh, yeah, I I'm thought you would. Thinking. I thought you would typoed when I saw saw your first tweet that said Mary Jane dot report, and I was like, "Oh, he that was a, that's probably an accident." Oh, he probably smoked that day, and I clicked on it, smoked, and I was so a lightweight. <laughs> Click on it and it loads up and goes to the Mary Jane report. So that's good news right there. Yeah, Mary Jane yeah. so dot report. Eventually it will be www.maryjane.report instead of .com. And I, I think that's, yeah, I love it. Um, but yeah, you seem to think it's cool too. And I'm glad because uh, eventually I will do that and have it just a simple base, you know. Um, but yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. Man, I appreciate you doing this. So we're oh, going to do this pleasure, sir. once a month and we'll do it. 
on the third Wednesday of every month, and we're doing the April edition, so it is right on sort of the eve of the big 420 holiday, and I'm sure we'll we'll be able to follow up on some of the news about that when some of the stats roll out and we can figure all those things out. What's yeah. the best way for people to get in touch with you? Um, Probably tweet at you? Yeah, they could tweet at me or... Um Mary Jane report at Gmail, which I'm going to, you know, obviously eventually that will be probably less used as I'm trying to move away from okay. Google. Um, but uh, yeah, my Twitter, which is at Mary Jane report or, uh, you know, Mary Jane dot report, which is a web page will take you to Mary Jane report dot blogspot dot com. Yeah. All right, Mr. Chris, Mary Jane dot report. Thanks so much for joining us, buddy. James, my pleasure. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Filato. Since 2005. Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology and the occult, all remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.